Hey guys, welcome back to Real Housewives Recaps. I'm so glad you're here. We are going to get into the, you know, Harry and Meghan of it all. But first I have to wish this beautiful lady a very happy birthday. That's right. It is Princess Anne's birthday at the time of this recording. I don't know when this is going up, but on her birthday, I just wanted to take a moment and celebrate her and recognize her incredible work ethic, her charitable work, her fierce spirit, her unwavering loyalty to duty. I, it, She's one of my favorites. You guys know that. One of my favorites of the royal ladies. I love her so much, and I truly hope she enjoys her day. And here's to a remarkable woman who continues to inspire and, and leads by example. So happy birthday, Princess Anne. All right. I know it's hard to move from that to this, but we must. Um, Richard Ar- <laughs> what am I saying? Richard Eden has put out an article with Daily Mail, and it's really good. And it's about the staff turnover, and it's about, well, just how awful these two are. You know, nothing new there. But um, I just thought it was worth talking about and reading. Again, I don't know when this is going up, so ignore it if I've already put up other stuff. But they haven't done anything yet for Columbia. I know some madness is coming, and I will be fully reporting on that. But while we're waiting, I thought it, it definitely is worth diving into this madness with the latest um, person to leave our 12. So let's talk about it. Let's read this article. I'm Jen. Thanks for being here, everyone. Hong Kong. All right. Richard Eden, the pecking order in Montecito. As a source tells me, the real reason Harry and Meghan have just lost their 18th member of staff. That will never not be funny to me. Think about how often these two play victim. Uh, Believe me, I'm stuck on thinking about that. It's all I think about. Um, They've had every opportunity in the world and they always, it's always somebody else's fault. How can they possibly even pretend like that's the case when they've lost 18 members of staff? You just, (laughs) the level of delusion with these two, it just, that's why you hear the glee in my voice. It's too funny. All right, let's take a look and have some laughs. My first inkling that those two may have trouble holding on to staff came in 2018 when I received a tip that Megan's personal assistant, Melissa Tubati, had quit suddenly just six months after the actress... (laughs) I'm using air quotes on that, had married into the royal family. It's a real shock, a source told me at the time. Why would she want to leave such a prestigious job so soon? Officials usually decline to discuss staffing matters, so it took me aback when Senior Palace source chose to pay tribute to her publicly. Melissa is a hugely talented person, the source said. She played a pivotal role in the success of the royal wedding and will be missed by everyone in the royal household. For someone to go out of their way to pay such fulsome tribute suggested Melissa's colleagues were not happy with her departure. I love the little breadcrumbs left behind the scenes. That's exactly what I think, too, is everybody was upset about it. But they can't come out and say, hey, it's because Megan's a raging bitch. (laughs) So they have to leave these little breadcrumbs to let us all know, hey, Melissa didn't do anything wrong. She was just stuck, so she had to leave because who would want to work for those two? The fact that she left so soon raised questions over the reasons for her exit. I don't know that there's questions about that. I can imagine why she left. Indeed, it later emerged that Jason Knopf, the employees, sorry, the couples, wow, I am out of it today. Let me try that again. The couples communications Secretary had written to Simon Case, Prince William's private secretary, in 2018 to say, I'm very concerned that Meghan was able to bully two PAs out of the household in the past year. The treatment of X was totally unacceptable. I need to see these bullying reports. I know I'm a broken record when it comes to this, but I'm telling you, this is the kind of thing we need to really see what went on. Some unbiased reporting to let us know exactly what these two, and I do say two of them because they are in this together, what these two put the staff through and what they have been up to. I need to see it. Redact the the victims' names. I get it, but I need to see this report. He added that that one seems intent on having someone in her sights. She's bullying why and seeking to undermine her confidence. We have had report after report from people who have witnessed unacceptable behavior toward Y. 
Melissa's exit proved to be the first of many departures from Prince Harry and Meghan's staff in the years that followed. I get stuck on this too. And I keep saying, can you imagine having to put up with these two and the way that they clearly treat people? It's not just one person saying this. It's a whole bunch of people saying this. So the way that they clearly have shown to treat people, having to put up with all that, deciding to stick it out because you want this on your resume God, I just can't imagine. And then these two go on Oprah and cry that they're the biggest victims in the whole wide world. It's just incredible. And then, of course, she beats that drum over and over about women's empowerment, women's voices, and all this faux feminist crap. But then you read things like this, that she has people in her sights, and it sounds like it's mostly women she targets over and over, and they, they torment them and make their lives miserable. That is awful, awful stuff. And um, so yeah, again, I need to see this bullet report. It's hard to keep track, but the total number of employees that those two have lost since they married in 2018 is thought to be at least 18, with nine or more having left since they moved to California two years later, quitting royal duties. How do you explain that? I understand that people change jobs, it may not be the right fit, blah, blah, blah. Not 18 of them. You have to realize there's something really wrong here. That's I, There's just so many examples like this that I will never understand how anybody can support Harry and Meghan. I guess I have to jump a whole bunch of IQ points to get on that level. I just don't. I can't wrap my head around it. It's that whole where there's smoke, there's fire. 18 people is not a coincidence. Those two staff retention problem was thrown into a sharp relief this week after I revealed on Monday that Harry's grandly titled chief of staff, Josh Kettler, uh, had suddenly quit after barely three months into the job amid much intrigue. When Kettler was appointed, he was described as the perfect man to guide King Charles's younger son through his next phase. What phase would that be? I mean, we've seen the anger. We've seen the substances. What other phases does he have? He's an idiot. Well, a spokesman for the Sussexes declined to comment on Kettler's departure. I'm sure they did. An anonymous source subsequently briefed People Magazine, a title that has been used to put across their point of view many times in the past. Yeah, exactly. It's their mouthpiece. Come on. We know when we see a source, it's Megan, right? That Kedler had been hired on a trial basis. Bullshit. The source claimed that the decision to part ways was mutual, with both sides agreeing it wasn't the right fit. Again, convenient narrative after the fact, in my opinion. Richard continues on to say, I'm old enough to remember when Harry and Meghan declared that they wouldn't indulge in anonymous briefings, which they suggested were part of the sinister palace methods that would have no place in the modern household. Oh my gosh. I, again, just rereading things like this. I know this stuff, but seeing it in print and knowing how these two operate, that's the only way they operate is these anonymous briefings. A source said, People Magazine said, hell, even their idiot plastic friend Omid puts in their book these sources, right? But they don't do that. Uh-huh. The anonymous briefing given to People Magazine has the appearance of being rather disingenuous, just like everything they say and do. Kedler's hiring was no more of a trial basis than any other appointment. I find the idea that they would fill a key position in such a way absurd. Exactly. They wouldn't. It doesn't make any sense. The significance of Kedler's role was clear to journalists covering Harry and Megan's. I didn't do that on purpose. It's not like I said maggot. Um, Megan's quasi royal tour. Of, I can't even call it that. I know people get mad at me in the comments when I even read that line. You're right. Royal has no part of any of this. This is their vacation. They're announcing their vacations. So let me try that again. Was to, let's see, journalists covering Harry and Meghan's vacation to Nigeria in May when he was seen by the Duke's side throughout. He had previously been with Harry in London at the St. Paul's Cathedral service to celebrate the 10th anniversary of Invictus Games. I tried so hard to be there. I really did. I wanted to, <laughs> I looked into it, believe me, it was just crazy expensive, but I wanted to fly over there and boo as loud as I could possibly boo. 
Can I just say I really love Richard Eden. I love the way he writes. I love that he's getting more and more feisty every time he writes something. I saw him arguing on, uh, I don't know if you can call it arguing, going back and forth on Twitter with this other faux journalist. I'm not calling Richard that. I'm calling this other guy. It's that Jack guy from Newsweek that always stands up for Harry and Meghan. I saw him going back and forth with that guy, and it was really funny. I love that he's calling this out. He says, to me, their uh, use of the word mutual is fascinating, too. They used the same word to describe the end of the relationship with the music streaming giant Spotify. A source tells me Josh soon realized that the job wasn't for him. I can't imagine. Can you imagine either of these two telling somebody qualified how to do anything? They are not qualified. Talk about Harry and Meghan are not qualified to do anything, to lead anything, to speak about anything. They can't stick out anything. They can't see anything through. So what, what do they know about anything? Of course, I'm sure he had great ideas, although he's crazy for working with those two but you know what I mean but I'm sure he wouldn't be heard for aspects of it he wasn't comfortable with he thought it was better to leave now than to continue in a job he did not enjoy I feel like um yeah I don't know how anybody can enjoy that job the source is too diplomatic to spell it out but was it the case uh, that the chief of staff discovered that there was only one chief of staff in the Montecito household and it wasn't him? The timing of Kettler's departure could not be more awkward. I think it's great. He was uh, intimately involved in organizing the couple's vacation to Columbia, which begins today. He now joins the growing ranks of the, quote, Sussex Survivor Squad, the gallows humor name former staff have given themselves. The most wounded members of that squad were those accused, who accused Megan of the bullying um, behavior while she was still a working member of the royal family. But remember, they went on to play victim and say, no, the palace was putting that out now to try to, was it silence us with this Oprah interview? They tried to make themselves the victims in all this. You cannot make this stuff up. And therein lies where, where I'm just so fascinated by this and I won't let this go because it's crazy. Palace aides admitted in 2022 that a report into allegations of bullying by the Duchess had effectively been buried. Why? And I know you guys always leave me comments. It's to protect the people that were bullied. But come on. Let's take their names out. I said before, we'll give them any name they want. They can change key details so that way nobody would ever guess. Change the genders. Change their anything. Change the names. Change the, the descriptions. Anything. Change the dates, but I want to know just the allegation. I'm not interested in a witch hunt of these employees. I'm interested in the allegations themselves. That's what I want to know. Um, so they had been buried. They said that the, again, though, where I get frustrated is remember they also throw, I mean, of course we know, they fr throw the royal family under the bus repeatedly and say they, they're willing to lie to protect my brother. It sounds like they, I'm not, I'm not trying to be mean to the royal family. You know, I'm very pro royal family, but I think. I think the ball was dropped a little bit on this one. I think that they these reports should have been really, I know, I, the legality and all that. I get it. But I'm just saying this should have been put out there. And I feel like they were covered for, and, and probably not to help Harry and Meghan, probably to help the staff. I totally get that. But let me vent here because I always get comments saying, Jen, you don't get it. I do get it. But you got to let me be frustrated about this. I am frustrated about this. They, it, it, they should have been punished at the time. They should have been released at the time. And Harry and Meghan should have had consequences because of this. No staff then. If they can't act like human beings toward them, no staff. No, I mean, bye. My point there is that they're so busy whining about how the royal family never looked after them. But it sure sounds like they really helped them out in this scenario by not making this stuff public. <sighs> okay. They said that the findings would never be made public. Um, even those who took part in the inquiry were not told what the outcome was. Officials would confirm only that their investigation had concluded and the recommendations on our policy and procedures have been uh, taken forward. AIDS had announced in 2021 that they were launching an inquiry into claims of Megan's belittling behavior while a working royal drove two female personal assistance out of the household and undermine the confidence of a third. 
<sighs> where there's smoke, there's fire, right? Staff were said to have been left in tears and feel, feeling traumatized, with some likening their condition to having PTSD. The royal household employed a third-party law firm to probe the claims in a move that some predicted could increase tensions between Harry and Meghan and the institution. Oh, blinking well. They probably should have thought about that before they acted like complete a-holes. They just think that they'll have no consequences. That's where I get so frustrated. The allegations have always been strongly denied. I'm sure they were by those two and their lawyers because that's what they do. That's what they do. A spokesman added the, um, she is saddened. I'm sure she is crying on the floor by this latest attack. Again, always the victim on her character particularly as someone who has been the target of bullying herself. Oh, we should feel sorry for Megan. 18 people are wrong. <laughs> it's Megan's the real victim. When will we understand this? Millions and millions of dollars spent on her wedding and her, and her whole life funded and all this, but she's the victim here. We should really feel sorry for her. <sighs> the spokesman added, let's see here. Oh, no, I read that part. Um deeply committed to supporting those who have experienced pain and trauma. Oh, okay. How's the African parks thing going? Would you say that you're committed to those people that, that suffered the atrocities? Cause we've, we haven't heard anything on that. Surely if Harry and Meghan want to ensure that they have no problems recruiting staff in the future, they should urge the palace to publish the report. Ding, ding, ding. Therein is why I love Richard Eden. Exactly. I'm sorry. If you have nothing to hide, then uh, why keep it private? Riddle me that, Batman. Guys, I yelled a lot in this one, but I feel strongly about this. Let me know your thoughts. Chime in in the comments. Tell me everything. This is just another ridiculous uh, piece put out by Harry and Meghan, not, not this article, but I'm saying just the claims that, oh, it was a temporary basis and it didn't work out. I'd really like that guy, uh, was it Kettering, Kettling, Kettering, to go on record and tell us if that's the case. Hmm. I'm sure the NDAs are in place, but one can dream. Thank you guys for being here. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys for being so lovely to me in the comments as always. I can't wait to read your comments on this one. I keep teasing it, but I promise you Jay has been working so hard on this hilarious, um, I can't even explain it. You'll, you'll totally get why I'm dancing around it when it comes out, but this hilarious merch that's about to drop, I'm very excited about that. Uh, what else? I sat down with HG, Ooh, that voice, and my twins, my triplets, the Sidley twins. Very excited to have that coming up soon. I, I, I got to see what Harry and Meghan are up to in Columbia, but as soon as that nonsense passes, we'll have that up. It's pro it looks like we talked for a long time, so it might be a two-parter on that, but you're really going to enjoy it. We, we had a lot of fun recording this one. Uh, I'm recording with Dylan soon, uh, winning communication. So look forward to that. And I don't know, so much other fun stuff. And of course, this Columbia nonsense, I'll be talking about it. Thank you guys as always for being here. Thank you for being so lovely to me. And I can't wait to bring you more stuff like this. Have the best day. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>